Now this end of the club hasn't gone very far vertically or depth wise. So this would be, let's call it the weakest swing, right? Now, if you were going to then simply just pivot more and then get the arms out, now that would be pretty close to what you would see with most players, correct? <laughs> Okay, mate, so let's talk about length of backswing. Now, it's probably one of the most researched terms out there is like, when does the backswing stop? When do I start the downswing? How long should I swing the golf club back? And probably one of the biggest misconceptions, I would say, when it comes to the general golf swing is that you need to get the club shaft parallel to the ground. Mm -hmm. And a lot of players are out there trying to get this club shaft always parallel to the ground, but they usually do so by breaking down the structure of the lead arm, cupping of the wrists and all of a sudden before you know it now they're just way too long very hard to sequence from there mm. so when you're working with players and let's say uh, the length of the arc of the backswing and how long and the position of that club shaft goes what's something you discuss with them and then a drill that you would use so there's a couple there's a couple of pieces to that so there's like there's the say someone trying to hit it for just further yeah as you say so that if you're trying to hit further a big range of motion is better Correct. so it's interesting that like um, yeah, sometimes a bent left arm wouldn't look that great, mm -hmm. you know, wouldn't necessarily something you'd always put in. But if you're talking about hitting the ball further, yeah. essentially, if you're being really honest, it is an extra lever. Yeah. And it's only, but it's only good if someone knows how to get, actually get rid of it. If I, like, if I keep it, get it bent and then keep it bent, then you're in a bit of bother. You're going to get the old chicken wing and you're going to hit it shorter. But it could become a lever. So it's not always a bad thing. Some, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. So there's, and then the other part to it is, like you said about people having to get parallel. Yeah. Well, also another way to think about it would be, there's another way to think about it would be how far does the butt of the club travel? Correct. Because, because obviously that being parallel, I could swing my, my arms back so far, but depending on my wrist angles, yeah. that looks that would look really short, that would look, you know, a lot a lot longer. But but my, you know, what range of motion can I put in my wrist, you know, my turn, mm -hmm. how, much, how much am I extending my right side, is my, is my chest up? Is it down? That sort of stuff. So, so that's that's what I, I like to look at initially. Butt of the club travel. Yeah. And then if someone was just going in for driver and just for long drive, then oh yes, and we're trying to actually get the club head to move further around. Further. Then there'd be something different. Yeah. So yeah. I would I would um, I would say that as a general reference, regardless of if you are trying to go for driving it as far as you can or general sequencing in the golf swing, you still need to make quality contact. And what we would see is the professional golfer, no matter if they're just hitting a controlled iron or a full driver, by the time that the golf club gets back to this position here with the club shaft level with the ground, the hands will get relatively back in front of the chest. When players do go too long and they go, I'm gonna rip this really hard, generally the sequencing of the arms and the body isn't intact. They'll fire and before you know it, the arms are very high, the club shaft is in this position here and they've lost any sort of leverage on the golf club to create any power. So regardless if you're trying to create, let's say more of a structured backswing for control or get more distance, as long as the golf club gets back into this position here, as we're working back down towards impact, that will help facilitate good quality contact. Yeah, definitely help. And another point um, I think is quite valid is that you can, you can get length in your golf swing by getting you know, super high hands. Mm -hmm. And that is that's one part. But essentially, if we talk about, I'll just step in for a sec. So like, that is what you would think, okay, yeah, that means I'm, I'm swinging the, I'm gonna get, get a lot of power on this. I've got really high hands and that does work for some people. Yeah. But if we're talking about how far the, the butt of the club is traveling, you're allowed to go that way Correct. as well. It's how, how much distance can you put between the butt of the club and the ball? Yep. So you can have like, you know, if I was a right-handed Bubba Watson, yeah, he is super high and that's a way of getting away from the ball. But then you look at like Rory, who, who arguably has like the lowest hands yep. at the top. Yeah. And he's arguably the best best driver and on his day he's the longest. Yeah. So you know that it's kind of forgotten about sometimes in that even being able to keep the hands kind of arms kind of low mm -hmm. but deep, that's also wound up. That's also plenty you can hit the ball plenty far from there. Yeah. You know, if you're like, you know, what is he, five foot nine Irish with curly hair and you can swing it hundred and twenty five miles per hour, then you can swing it hundred and eight well miles per hour. Yeah. yeah, you're fine. Yeah, but but essentially, but part of that comes from, he, he gets his speed apart from his depth. 
Yeah. You know, because he's like very like very rotary. Mm. Whereas someone else, like a DJ or Bob Watts, is all it's like he's all arms. A little bit more. Arms. So it's kind of good to find out what's what is your body type for speed. Yeah. Everyone's a bit different. It might be a mesh of both. Yeah. You might have big long arms, so you can stand there and go up you go. Yeah. But if you're like maybe a bit smaller, you think, oh, you know what, I'm actually going to go more this way, and use the rotation for a bit of speed. Yeah, so there's no um, cut pace perfect amount of travel for the end of the club, that's what you're saying, because you could do it in a variety of ways and still get yeah. it done. And we see that if a tour player, they're generally the thoroughbreds of the lot, right? They can kind of make anything yeah. work. They will, through hand-eye coordination and reaction, match things up, even if they were to take the funkiest golf swing. And the yeah. main reason being is by the time the club gets back into the most important section of the swing, which is through impact, well, they all look very, very similar. Yeah, right. This up here can produce more or less power for the yeah. professional. Yeah. But let's talk about, let's say, a, a general amateur golfer who, if you set up to the ball for me, has very minimal body turn, a lot of arm swing and fold, a breakdown of structure here. Now, this end of the club hasn't gone very far vertically or depth wise. So, this would be, let's call it the weakest swing, right? Now, if you were going to then simply just pivot more and then get the arms out, now that would be pretty close to what you would see with most players, correct? Yeah, yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna hit it much further from there. Yeah. And there's an optimum, you know, you can't be like, Too like so far, yeah. well this way there's an, there's, an, there's an optimum amount to be able to do, deliver the club properly, yeah. like you said, to come, come back down. Yeah. But yeah, essentially that's it, you know, put an extra pivot in, get enough depth, mm. length, width, Another, another part to it, which we you know we were talking about the bent arm. Yeah. That's got no width, but you see someone like a Joe Miller. Yeah. You know, super long hitter. He, he has to perhaps bend his arms. He knows he can get more. Right. He can then get the get the width when he needs it. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just jump in here again. Now, I think what players need to use as a reference here is, at the end of the day, don't just try and achieve a certain look for the sake of it because your favourite player might be doing it, or you think you need to get the club shaft to parallel. Yeah. I would say it's far more important to focus on the movement of your body and how the club relates to that movement. So if I'm a player and my body is turned as getting to here, well, if the rest of it is all just done from the arms folding, that is not going to be an effective way to deliver that golf club back to the ball. We need to focus on creating a big pivot of the body, so allowing the chest and the lower body, the hips to turn, the legs to change flex, to get ourselves into a position where we have width, yeah. structure, and then length. That's far more important. And you see, as you do that there, to get the extra extra range of motion, you know, things like you know, getting your, your sternum or chest towards the sky. Correct. So you, so you get your length via uh, extension. Yeah. If I was if I if I if I was bent over my hips, my knees, my ankles, I'm only on this far back. Correct. If I extend the, all of those, yeah. That's and you would look at someone like Rory, right? Players look at his swing and transition. They might go, "Oh my God, he dips so much like Tiger back in the day." But that is an effect of this great extension of their body at the top of the swing, where that gets their hands in a high, deep position, especially with Rory. Then that allows him to then go back into flexion, compress their body into the ground, which applies force which then as they explode up, translates into the head of the golf club and give them profound amounts of distance. You get, you get into all this ground reaction forces and I'm yeah. sure like if everyone goes back to your like video with, with Furlonger, with Steve yeah. Furlonger, I know Steve well, you know, there's a, it's that whole like a sequence of how things happen. Yeah. But like you gotta go, you gotta go down to then go up on the backswing. The more you can go up, the more you can then go down, the more you can, go, you can press down, the more you can get back up and get that speed up. You know, yeah. there's, there's so much to it. But I think for someone who just has, which is great to know all that, but to actually put it into play, yeah. most people don't have enough range of motion in the backswing. Yeah. And then it's where do you get that range of motion? Like you say, like, am I getting it here? That's an option, but it's not a great option. Yeah. I would say there's a much better option to have something like your chest. Chest towards the sky. Yeah. That's a better option than trying to fold the arms. So forth, yeah. Yeah. So tying a bow on this for everyone, at the end of the day, don't try and achieve that look simply just by using your arms. Yeah. The length of backswing is a very much so dictated by how well you move your body throughout the swing. So if I'm working on this, because back in the day, I used to be in the old kick the trail knee flex, keep the chest down camp, yeah. and then trying to get that length of my arms, which yeah. we see a lot of players doing. So I would- Short and crooked. Oh yeah, very, <laughs> very short and crooked. Now, with all the work that I've been doing on my swing, I've been working on a lot more extension of the upper body, less travel of the arms, more center pivot. I can feel my body and chest extending, which then allows me to put that pressure back into the ground. I'm gonna get that feeling, hit one and see how we go.
So throughout that motion, as I got right to the top, I felt like I had a lot of room to come down and strike it powerful. So range of motion, don't worry so much about the club of where it finishes at the top. Let's ensure that we're using our body correctly and that'll happen as an effect. That was good. That's right. Cheers.